So hello everybody, welcome at the Clavichord. Today we are going to practice um, and play actually a little bit because it's a piece that I uh, should be able to play but prepare so to say for recording the first uh, or the, the Prelude in F sharp minor of the first book of the Well-Tempered Keyboard by uh, Jess Bach for you know that in 2022, probably in February, I was sitting together with Alberto next week, not only to re-record the Fifth Symphony for the fourth time, I think the third recording was already fine, the second too, but my young Italian friend wants to uh, have the perfection for this symphony, so we're going to do that again, and honestly, I am looking forward to that. You, that that's music you can play in your entire life. But we're sitting together also to talk about the, the releases of the recordings for next year in the World Tempered Clavier Book. One will be one of those. And so I am preparing for Book 1 to be recorded, re-recorded because I think 23 already are on YouTube of the 24. But obviously I'm going to do them completely new. Today is just a playing session. I'm thinking of diversifying these practicing sessions a little bit making fingerings, practicing really the fingerings, and also talking a little bit about the notation. That would not be a real practicing session, but it's important if you want to study a piece. So, and I know many of you are waiting for me to do that. And we are going to dive into notation with the World Tempered Clavier a lot more in the future, but it will be like a mini series within the practicing sessions. Um, you, you know, you, uh, if you are subscribed and hit the bell, you will be notified of those uh, videos the coming weeks or maybe months okay without further ado i'm going to press one key here and you're going to see the keyboard don't worry about this wooden uh, uh how do you call it in english um pieces they do not damage the clavichord and i will work out something more elegantly it's just i can put down the, the score so you can see the notes and i can still read them so I'm going to start very, very slowly just to, to feel the piece and to have no interpretation whatsoever. It's something I do often when I just practice a piece that I already have played in the past and just and start again reading the notes and reading them as if I've never heard the piece before. Having made the fingering already is a very important thing to bring the piece very quickly back. So this is not about the right or wrong tempo. This is not about the final interpretation. This is just me as a musician interacting with the music um, on a very open and open field, so to say. Um, I wouldn't say open mind. I mean, it's, it's just me as a listener almost, curious to see or to listen what will happen. It's as, I'm talking for myself. It's for me a very helpful way of when you bring a piece back that you already have studied to bring it back, but not search for the interpretation you had previously. You will notice that many times you go back a little bit in that direction automatically, but to just, you know, um, pretend at least that it's the first time you absorb the notes and it's always very refreshing and very pleasant. It's something that I really can recommend you doing if you haven't tried that before. So I'm going to start just playing. Maybe I'm commenting on myself during the practice. Maybe we'll just continue. I don't know. I've never an idea how these practicing sessions um, develop and it's part of uh, why it's so fun to do actually. Um, I will be focusing on the music and secondly, I should mention that on the sound of the instrument. It's a little bit out of tune. It's winter here, it's freezing, but still the clavichord holds uh, quite perfectly. But sound, touch, um, making the instrument sing, so cantabile playing is very important, at least to me, it's a very important tool to at, in a way to say, enter the interpretational field from, uh, from a back door. It's, um, it, it's like you open that door and suddenly you are walking within the notes, within this musical universe that you can observe by just listening to the instrument, not worrying about anything, tempo, articulation, phrasing, whatever. Um, 
the things will come by itself. Okay, without further ado, there we go.
I'm still searching for this, 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 you know, um, being really relaxed and yet the music needs to steadily move forward. You can't play in a way that it's too relaxed and there's nothing happening. You can also push a little bit, like you want to insert the music or the performance with a little bit of that, but it's artificial. It needs to come by itself. And most important in this is that the first note and the first few notes dictate the entire piece, actually. It's not only the tempo or the rhythm, it's also the sound. This eighth note here, it's very difficult because actually, if you tie it to the C sharp, or you release it. I think it's, it's meant to be released a little bit sooner, so you have this little air gap there. But it's difficult to release because if you release it too, too soon, that's like you, you start it and already it stopped. So a very gentle release, opening actually to the C sharp without uh, tying those two notes together. Let's try. And yet the rhythmical impulse comes from the first beat. You could you would say obviously because that's the reason why it's the first beat. But Bach starts in the right hand with you could say what's the motive. It's not it's not really a theme. Eh? It's it's like a motive where he's working with. Um, it's not a melody. You know, it's like an own. It's it's like it's really a motive. But he starts at the second eight notes, and yet. It's kind of upbeat feeling, but then an upbeat to the second beat, which gives already an indication, but that's for another video of the tempo, that he's not really thinking in straight quarter notes, uh, like in common time. You have many kinds of common time. Common time is like a package where you can, where you can put in like a lot of notes or very few notes or a lot of harmonic changes or very few harmonic changes all kind of rhythmical structures and it's all in this one package of 4-4 of four, four time signatures so it, it are these kind of details that decide you whether your tempo, the tempo of the denario, the middle tempo of this of this time signature is really on the middle or is a little bit faster or is a little bit slower and on top of that comes the character of the piece so this is not particularly what I would, 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 would call like a very lively and happy piece. It's, it's pretty introvert and, and, and not really in, in a very, very uh, friendly maybe, yes, but joyful. It's certainly not joyful, we can, we can agree on that. So in this accent and a kind of a bit accent. How much, how much accent? Are we going to make every quarter note longer? Like really having, putting emphasis on each of those notes is possible, eh? Because tom, tum, pom. That's the entire piece.
this worked. Eh? I'm not saying that it's not, we should bring a little bit more variation, but that's for much later. That's not important right now. I think you as a listener needs to hear this slow incremental step down of this very simple motive that Bach is just playing around with. It's a very simple eh? ornamentation. And then this accent makes sense on the second quarter beat. You, there is air, there is there is energy to give that accent. Dum, yari, dum, ding, dum. And we're thinking more in eight note structure now. I'm not saying this, this is my final tempo. Um, I marked quarter note 50 once in some history, I guess, when I recorded that for YouTube. So I think we are below that. So maybe in the future I will play a little bit faster. It doesn't matter. For now, it's just the principle. Chances are there, though, that I will stick to this tempo, but we'll see. Also because, and then again, this is not going to be a video about tempo. We're going to dive into the notation, but we have common time. As I said, there's a package, there's a huge range. It's not always clear. There are there are there are parameters. There are there are certain margins you can take. Like what is the character? Some some might feel like it's not so introvert. Like it's more brave. Um, how would you play this on an organ? With plenum stops, like mixture stops, or just with the principal, or even with with flu with with flu stops, obviously, but with uh, with uh, uh, with 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 uh, bourdon stop, like you know, um, a flute stop, I would say, or yeah. It can, it can differ from one person, one performer to, to, to the other. But right now on the clavichord, this sounds pretty okay for me.
maybe a little, little bit faster than at the beginning. So. So we run 70 for the 8 note in single beat, so it will be quarter note 70 in whole beat if you care for that. So that's below the tempo denario, like 60 the second for one quarter note. We are below that, justified, quote unquote, by the character, but also the eighth note structure. Also at the end you see that it gives a syncopation within the quarter note. That's kind of sign that it's it's um, underneath the quarter note beat. But just one more time to finish. Okay, I think this is a good um, start to let the piece develop a little bit more. And normally this is what's going to happen. I need a haircut I see on the screen. Um, that's what's going to happen. So bringing these pieces back, there's always, always a little bit of, I call it internal tension, you know, it's, it's not yet really. And it, it, it's something you have to develop. I have to develop with every piece I bring back or I study. There's a moment where everything goes like very easily. There's a moment where you want to reconstruct that feeling that you had, you know, everything went by itself. And this balance of, of inserting a little bit of, I wouldn't say positive tension, it's not, not negative tension. It's like this, this, this energy that's there. Um, this, this, you have to be able to, to grab that, it's maybe a very abstract way of, of describing that and just position it where it needs to be and that just takes time. You cannot fight that, it's also a matter of practicing playing a lot. It, it happens when, you, when the piece is really in your blood. So, Okay, Predator F sharp minor, um, next time maybe the fugue or we 
take another piece. And again, stay tuned for another for other series to come to develop. Help me develop those as well. Leave me in the comment box what you would like me to do. But I've noticed I've seen many of you, or some of you write like notation is something you really want to, would like to dive into. And um, that's going to happen. Also, when you want to have the fingerings of this music that's on Patreon, uh, go and check that out if it's something for you. So just a scan of my score for you to study. And there um, you find a, a lot of other things, but that's for another time on Patreon. And for instance, you can also have, there is also a, a way to talk to me about, among other things, this music, but now I'm rambling and a digressing of the end of my video. Um, check it out on Patreon if it's something for you. I would appreciate it very much to continue also this series of practicing sessions. That was it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned by subscribing and we will see each other very soon again. Bye.